We're live. Thank you. I'll just start the backup recordings, please. PC recording has started. Backup is rolling. How it is going? Could everyone please turn on their videos? Hello and good afternoon and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask that everyone please turn off all electronic devices. Please turn them to vibrate. Madam Majority. What happened? Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of February 25th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Borelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Constantinides. Cornegie. Aki. Deutsch. I'm here. Dharma Diaz. Presente. Ruben Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Eugene. Gennaro. Gibson. Blessed afternoon, everyone. I'm here. Jonai. Gordenchik. I am here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Cousin. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Yeah. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Riley. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Aquí también. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present. Alone. Here. Ben Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. 
Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Kelly U. Farrow, spiritual leader of Convent Avenue Baptist Church, located at 420 Convent Avenue in Manhattan. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, can you join with me in a word of prayer? Lord God, we come today with petitions on our hearts and minds. We come asking you to hear our prayers, our desires, our joys, our hurts and despairs. Sometimes as black people, Lord, we wonder if you hear us. We wonder if you will be the Lord that will deliver us. But we think back on the liberation of our ancestors and how you crushed their enemies and removed them from dangers seen and unseen. And we know we have a God who is our protector and remember, you are a deliverer of your people and liberation of the oppressed. So we come today in the background of what you did yesterday, knowing your power is fully at work today. And we see how you work in and out of time into tomorrow. We come asking you to heal our land, add a soothing balm to our wounds of our hearts and deliver us this day from the hands of injustice. Revive our joy, O oh God, restore our love and reconcile a kinder nature toward you and toward our neighbor. Teach us how to love as you love, show us how to forgive as you forgive it, and direct us into the truth of who you are in justice, faith, and resilience. Lord, we love you. We know we need you. We need your guidance, we need your wisdom, and we need your protection. Lord, you are our high place, you are our citadel, and we look to you to lead us and guide us along the way. The hymns teach us great is thy faithfulness, for you fail us not. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness you have given us in this life and the blessings we will have when we meet you in glory. We thank you, Lord, and we are grateful for your loving kindness toward us. We know there is none like you in the heavens or in the earth. And we, your people, remember as our parents have taught us, as the ages have taught us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that, again, we say thank you. Oh Lord, you are the ancient of days. You are time itself and we, your creation, honor you today. Thank you for breathing life into us and giving our lives purpose and honor. Teach us how to walk worthy of that purpose and honor and display it in faithfulness, kindness, love, and justice towards all people. Most of all, Thank you for our salvation that rests fully entirely in the person of Jesus Christ. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling, to the only wise God, be glory, power, and dominion now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that very timely prayer. I know that the hearts and minds of this body are very heavy with the losses that we have experienced. So I thank you so much, Reverend Farrow, at this time. I would now like to ask Council Member Mark Levine to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I'm really honored to do so and honored to say a little bit about the incredible Reverend Dr. Kelly Yu Ursula Farrow, who is known in our community as a preacher, educator, lecturer, mentor, social justice advocate, political voice, and businesswoman. Reverend Dr. Kelly finished her Bachelor of Science degree at Nyack College as a dual major in business and Bible. Went on to pursue her Master's of Business Administration with a concentration in human resource management from Nyack Graduate School of Business. The following year, after completing her MBA, she graduated with her Master's in Divinity with a concentration in theology from Alliance Theological Seminary. Also, to add to her list of educational accomplishments, Reverend Dr. Kelly has completed the requirements for her earned PhD in education at Capella University with a concentration in higher education administration. In the fall of 2018, Dr. Farrell created an inaugurated Circle of Sacred Fire, which is a preaching intensive designed to prepare women of color in ministry in the area of preaching. The Alpha Circle gathered a diverse population of 20 women to focus on the circle's three fundamental principles, preaching, the Black church context, preaching with the womanist ethic, 
and preacher as person leadership development. Dr. Farrell is also part of the faculty at Pillar College in Newark, New Jersey, as well as Manhattan College in Riverdale. Dr. Farrell's interdisciplinary womanist ethic is engaged with all things business and theology. As a womanist theologian in her various settings, she eloquently brings theological conversation and best practices in business ethics, organizational leadership, and ministry development. Dr. Farrell works in several areas within the Black church context and outside of it. Some of her appointments include Chief of Staff to the Women of Color and Ministry Project. She also serves as a mentor to women in ministry in the New York City cohort of the Rise Together National Mentoring Network. Not only does she mentor, but she also creates safe spaces and context that empowers women and men in business and business development. Over a period of 10 years, Dr. Farrell has worked as a business consultant guiding startups to great success and has held several senior leadership roles within top organizations from the private finance sector to nonprofit healthcare. Dr. Farrell has also received the honor and distinction of being inducted into the National Scholars Honor Society for Academic Excellence and was the recipient of the Young Outstanding Woman of America Award. She currently serves as a member of the Baptist Ministers Conference of Greater New York and Vicinity, and we're honored that she delivered our invocation today. Thank you, and back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Levine, and thank you for sharing uh, Dr. Reverend Farrow with us today. She is such a joy and a force of power throughout New York City, and we see clearly why you recommended her today to give today's prayer. I would now at this time like to have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Brad Lander. Council Member Lander, you may be on mute. Madam Majority Leader, can you hear me? I apologize, my connection is unstable. Yes, we can hear you. Can hear All you right, now. thank you. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of the City Council on February 11th, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. Council Member Lander, we will now move right into messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M287, the election of James F. Gennaro, new council member, 24th district. Congratulations to council member Gennaro, received, ordered, printed, and filed. Preconsidered M's 288 and 289, transfer of city funds and new revenues. Finance. M290, withdrawing Celia C. Weaver for appointment to the Planning Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you, and we will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting. As everyone knows, our nation hit a tragic and unfortunate milestone this week. On Monday, America counted half a million Americans who have died from COVID-19, and it's pretty certain that that is an underestimate of the number of people that we've lost. In New York City, as of yesterday, 29,860 of our neighbors and loved ones and friends have died from this virus. We have done so much hard work so far, and we have a lot of hard work ahead of us to make sure that more New Yorkers get vaccinated and that we're taking more steps to help our city recover from COVID-19. Before we dive into our legislative agenda, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge some important losses in our city, in addition to the folks that we've lost from COVID. As a result, I mean, sorry, as always, we acknowledge those who died while on the job. And I'm sad to say that we have two of those deaths today. On February 18th, an elevator mechanic apprentice named Joseph Rosa, died in an accident in the Bronx. He was 25 years old. We also lost Dante Tomas, a deli worker. On February 16th, he was shot and killed while working at a Bronx deli. He was 33 years old. And as we do at every stated meeting, I wanna remember the lives of those that we lost to 9-11 related illnesses. We recently lost Detective Marcos Quionis of the New York City Police Department before he retired from the NYPD 
Detective Kionis was a top expert in religious cults at the police department. He was 65 years old. I also want to acknowledge the death of police officer Nicholas Pupero. He was 48 years old and we lost Sergeant Adrian Rodriguez of the NYPD. We also mourn the passing of police officer Terrence Connolly, who proudly served in the 112th police precinct in Queens. He was 47 years old. EMS Lieutenant Paige Humphreys of FDNY Station 16 also died of 9-11 related illnesses. And they retired after 39 years of service. And we lost Fire Patrolman Robert Renaud of the New York City Fire Patrol. He was 67 years old. Recently, Barry Delisle of the Department of Sanitation lost his battle to 9-11 related illness. We are sending our condolences to all of their families and friends. And we have some exceptionally sad news here as part of our council family. We lost Emmanuel, better known as Manny Braxton, life companion to our friend and colleague, council member Debbie Rose. Stylish and smart, Manny was a devoted supporter of Debbie. He didn't even designed shirts featuring her portrait. He wore those shirts proudly. Manny is survived by his sister, Dorothy Lee Green, sons, Emmanuel Braxton Jr. and Emery Braxton, daughter, Shauna, as well as her sister, Carol Her Kelly Haroldson. Debbie, we are so deeply sorry for your loss and we send our condolences in the name of the council to Manny's family, to you and to your family. Uh, we know how much Manny meant to you, but together, I think more than 40 years, you and Manny, we are so deeply sorry. We're also very sad to report that our dear friend and colleague, council member Adrian Adams, unexpectedly lost her mother last night in the middle of the night. We just learned about this a few hours ago and we don't have a lot of details, but it was very, very sudden. Ruth Edie Middleton was a retired New York City correction captain. And this is a devastating, devastating loss for Councilmember Adams, who was extremely close to her mother. I spoke to her earlier and she said that her mother was her best friend. As many of you uh, I'm sure remember, Councilmember Adams lost her father to COVID in May. It has been a really, really difficult year for Councilmember Adams and her family, and we are hugging you and, and wishing that we could be there in person to comfort you and provide solace to you and Jay and your family. Let us pause for a moment of silence for Manny Braxton, Ruth Edie Middleton, Joseph Rosa, Dante Thomas, Marcos Quionis, Nicholas Pupero, Adrian Rodriguez, Terrence Connolly, Paige Humphreys, Robert Renaud, Barry Delisle, and all of those that we have lost to COVID-19. We're thinking of you, Debbie and Adrian. I also would like to note that the city has seen a horrific wave of attacks against Asian and Asian Americans, Asians and Asians Americans. We cannot allow the Asian community or any of our communities to live in fear and to be unfairly targeted. These senseless and heartless attacks are an attack on our entire city and our city's values. I want to acknowledge that tomorrow is the 28th anniversary of the first terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. We lost six New Yorkers that day and more than a thousand people were injured. This is a tragedy that we do not forget. And let's recognize that this evening, our Jewish friends and neighbors are honoring the holiday of Purim. To everyone celebrating, uh, we wish you a happy and joyous Purim. And on a final note, I wanna welcome back council member Jim Gennaro to the council. Congratulations. I'm not sure if he's here yet. I'm here. I'm here, Mr. Speaker. Oh, I'm wonderful. Here. I'm here. Wonderful. Well, we are so happy to have you here, uh, Councilmember Gennaro. Uh, you were an esteemed member of this body uh, for many, many years. And we are just uh, very fortunate, and your district is fortunate to have you back. So welcome to your first Zoom stated meeting. And we look forward to hearing you and also to recording your votes later today. Now let's dive into our agenda today. It includes several bills designed to strengthen our city out of the land use committee will be voting on the following items. 
the Court Theater, a project which will facilitate the rehabilitation and expansion of the landmark theater and the development of a hotel on a zoning lot in Council Member Keith Powers' district, 42-01 28th Avenue rezoning, which will facilitate the development of a new eight-story mixed-use building with 54 housing units, including approximately 14 affordable units in Council Member Costa Constantinides' district, 16th Avenue rezoning. We will vote to disapprove the applications for rezoning to allow a five-story commercial office building which is out of context with the character of the surrounding residential area. And this rezoning was slated to take place in Councilmember Calman Yeager's district. We're voting on a Landmarks Preservation Commission designation of the East 25th Street Historic District in Councilmember Farrell Lewis's district, the first historic district in East Flatbush. Congratulations, Councilmember. The Everlasting Pine HDFC ground lease amendment, a UDAP project approval and disposition to amend the ground lease for an additional 50 year term. This will facilitate the preservation of 87 apartments for seniors in council member Margaret Chin's district. The Harlem East Harlem urban renewal plan amendment will extend the duration of the plan for 40 years in council members Bill Perkins and Diana Ayala's districts. 214-32 Hillside Avenue rezoning will facilitate the development of a two-story commercial building with parking in council member Barry Grudenchik's district. And out of the finance committee, we'll be voting on several items. Introduction number 2046A, sponsored by council member Brad Lander, will clarify and codify the existing requirement and practice of the mayor issuing capital commitment plans and capital project detail reports. The current language of the charter does not clearly delineate the requirements and timelines of the two distinct reports that are produced, and this bill would address that clarity. Uh, Brad has been working on these issues for a long time. This comes on the capital tracker that we did. That was his bill last year, so I want to congratulate him. And from the staff, I want to thank Rebecca Chasen and Stephanie Ruiz. Preconsidered introduction. Uh, which is sponsored by council member Danny Drum, our finance committee chair, would extend the date by which the council has to submit its preliminary budget response from March 25th to April 1st. And I wanna thank Rebecca Chasen from our finance division for that. And the other pre-considered introduction out of the finance committee uh, sponsored by council member Drum would extend for the 2021 to 2022 tax year, all senior citizen and disabled homeowner property tax exemptions she and D, which were received in the 2020 to 2021 tax year without requiring the submission of a new renewal application, except in four circumstances where the Department of Finance has reason to believe the property is no longer eligible to receive the benefit. Those circumstances are the owner may have died, the owner has sold the property to a new owner, a new owner was added to the deed, or the owner no longer uses the property as a primary residence. And from the staff, again, I wanna thank Rebecca Chasen and Emre Adev. We'll be voting on two Article 11 property tax exemptions, one in Councilmember Diane Ayala's district and uh, one in Councilmember Antonio Reynoso's district, a transparency resolution, an expense budget modification and a revenue budget modification. Moving on to our legislative agenda, our first bill comes out of our Economic Development Committee and is sponsored by Councilmember Paul Vallone. Introduction number 1839A will require the Brooklyn Navy Yard Development Corporation to submit an annual report to the mayor and the city council speaker detailing progress on the entity's master plan for land use. The legislation will facilitate ongoing oversight of the long-term development of the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And from the staff, I want to thank Joshua Kingsley and Emily Forgione. Next, we have two bills related to fire safety at film production sites coming out of the Fire and Emergency Management Committee. This legislation responds to instances like the tragic, tragic death of firefighter Michael Davidson. He lost his life battling a fire at a converted brownstone being used as a film set. The fire department was unaware the brownstone was a film production location and that it was altered with temporary walls and subdivisions to facilitate filming while impeding means of egress and altering the building's layout. As a result, firefighter Davidson was trapped in the burning building. Introduction number 1849A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, will require the fire department to establish 
fire safety provisions for certain film production locations. The legislation would also establish a certificate of fitness for a production location fire safety manager that also designates circumstances where certain filming activities would require fire department inspection or supervision of the location or the presence of a production location fire safety manager during filming. And I really want to um, acknowledge and continue to send our condolences out to firefighter Davidson's widow, Eileen, who was instrumental as part of moving this package of bills forward with Councilmember Borelli, the chair of the committee, and uh, of course with uh, Councilmember Cornegie, who has the next bill, introduction number 1852A, sponsored by Councilmember Cornegie, which will require any person permitted for scouting, rigging, and production activities to provide film set blueprints in advance to the fire department. The legislation would also require that the fire department and the mayor's office of media and entertainment establish protocols to enable interagency information sharing regarding film production activities authorized by a permit obtained from the mayor's office of media and entertainment. Under the bill, these protocols would provide the fire department with access to all permit information, require local firehouses to be notified when certain film permits are issued and enable firefighters to receive detailed information on production location conditions, including any alterations. The bill requires that, a film, that at film production locations, means of egress are maintained, portable fire extinguishers are present, and the location is maintained free of accumulated flammable waste. I wanna thank from the staff, Joshua Kingsley, and I also wanna thank the, the two major unions that represent members of the FDNY, the UFA, led by their president, uh, Andy Ansbro, and uh, from UFOA, Jake LaMonda. They were instrumental to this bill as well. Thank you to the UFA and the UFOA for their partnership and help on this. Our next bill is related to renewable Rikers and the city council's vision for the future of the island. Introduction number 1591B, sponsored by council member Costa Constantinides, would require the Department of Environmental Protection in consultation with the Department of Sanitation to study the feasibility of, of constructing a new wastewater treatment facility on Rikers Island. This study will take into consideration population projections, the minimum and maximum capacity of wastewater treatment facilities, what it should have, and the amount of wastewater that could be diverted from other facilities. Also, the Department of Environmental Protection would assess the presence of methane on the island, and the potential for installing methane recovery systems. The Department of Environmental Protection would solicit public comments and the Rikers Island Advisory Committee would make its own recommendations. The review would be submitted to the mayor, the council speaker, and the Rikers Island Advisory Committee and the public within three years. I wanna thank from the staff, Brad Reed, Samara Swanston, and Nicole Aben. The pandemic has been particularly devastating for our city's homebound seniors, especially those who are over 75 years old, who are at the highest risk for hospitalization and death from COVID-19. We need to get more of them vaccinated. That means creating a system to go to them instead of having them to have to go out and try to get to a faraway appointment. The council will vote on legislation that does that. The bill comes out of our aging committee. Introduction number 2225A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, will create a plan to vaccinate homebound seniors. Under the legislation, the Commissioner of Health and Mental Hygiene or another designated agency would establish a plan to vaccinate homebound seniors for COVID-19 and post the plan on the department's website. The Commissioner of Health and Mental Hygiene or another designated agency would also be required to report to the council on implementation of the plan every two months after the plan is issued. And I would wanna thank from the staff, Harbani Ahuja, Sarah Liss, and Nell Beekman. Next, the council will vote on five resolutions, four out of our immigration committee and the last one from the education committee. Immigrant New Yorkers have been disproportionately impacted by the devastating effects of COVID-19. And today we are voting on four resolutions that seek to protect immigrants. Three of the immigration resolutions are from Councilmember Matthew Eugene, resolution number 1416A, sponsored by Councilmember Eugene, 
calls on the Department of Homeland Security to halt deportation proceedings during, COVID, during the COVID-19 pandemic to restrict the global spread of the disease. Resolution number 1417A, also by Councilman Matthew Eugene, calls on the Department of Homeland Security to place a moratorium on all removal proceedings for employment-based status holders who lost their employment because of the pandemic. Resolution number 1418A, also by Councilmember Eugene, calls on Congress to pass and the president to sign legislation that would allow employment-based visa holders to retain lawful status after losing their jobs if the loss was due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This legislation will provide temporary work and residency authorization for foreign-born individuals laid off because of the pandemic. The last resolution in the immigration package is Resolution 1419A, sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya. This resolution calls on the federal government to pass legislation that would provide immigration relief for family members of frontline workers in the health profession who have died because of COVID-19. And from the staff, I want to thank Elizabeth Kronk and Harbani Ahuja for their work on those four resolutions coming out of the Immigration Committee. And lastly, our fifth resolution is one coming out of the Education Committee. Resolution number 1473, sponsored by Councilmember Farrell Lewis, calls on the Department of Education to ensure uh, remote learning is as effective as possible for students with disabilities. This resolution calls on the Department of Education to ensure parents are well prepared and receive the necessary training to support and assist their children with remote learning, children who have disabilities. And I wanna thank from the staff, Jan Atwell for her work on that resolution. Before I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader, I wanna also say that we lost someone else that I was remiss in mentioning. Council Member Kevin Riley's grandfather, Noel Oscar Riley, he was a uh, community leader in Co-op City. He was 97 years old, and I wanna recognize him and remember him today and send our condolences uh, to Council Member Riley and his family. So with that, I turn it back to you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raised hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Lander, Salamanca, and Powers. Okay, we will begin with council member Lander. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. There was a mix up with the dates earlier. I thought we were adopting the minutes of the February 11th meeting, but we're actually adopting the minutes of the January 28th meeting. So I make a motion for unanimous consent to adopt the minutes of the city council meeting of January 28th, 2021. Thank you. Thank you. And do you also wish to speak at this time? That, that's okay. I'll speak on, I'll speak during the, during the vote. Okay. I thought we had a twofer. <laughs> So now we will go to Council Member Salamanca, followed by Council Member Powers. And begins now. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Um, I just, you know, last month, uh, at the last stated meeting, uh, I brought up some concerns regarding the renewable Rikers package. Um, again, uh, my position is that I believe in, in these bills. Uh, my concern was uh, that there was no communication to the community board in the Bronx, which oversees Rikers. Um, so I want to thank um, my, my voice was heard. I want to thank Councilmember Casa Casantinides. He met with the community board yesterday, and there's a commitment again uh, to have an in-depth uh, presentation uh, with Bronx Community Board too um, next month. And I just want to inform my colleagues, and um, I want to congratulate Costa. And I will be voting yes on intro 1591. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Salamanca. Councilmember Powers. Thank you. Um, hi, good, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to welcome our new, our, our new colleague, but an old colleague, Jim Gennaro, back to the city council. Looking forward to working alongside of you. I just wanted to say two things. One is I want to thank Councilman Varelli and Councilman Cornegie for their bills today on the fire safety. Michael Davidson, firefighter Michael Davidson is a friend, was a friend, and his family and Eileen and the kids, also a friend. And that loss was a loss not to just to the 
to people that I know, but to the entire city. And I really am grateful for their work here to make sure that that never happens again and that no family and no group of friends have to lose someone like firefighter Michael Davidson. So I want to say a very big thank you to them. We're also taking a vote today on the Court Theater, which is in my district, which is a Broadway theater that is taking advantage of a bonus to allow them to do a rehab uh, of their theater. Uh, I don't have to tell anybody that a moment where Broadway has the lights off is a really important moment to make sure that we can move forward on an important project to modernize a theater and to bring back Broadway stronger than ever before. So I, I would ask you all for your support on that. And I wanna thank chairs Salamanca and Moya and Raju and the land use folks and Kate in my office for working very, very hard over the last couple of years, but particularly in the last few weeks to get that done. And I'd ask everyone to vote yes today. So thank you and uh, Ms. Majority Leader and thank you everyone for your consideration. Thank you. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Council Members Constantinides, Borelli, Carnegie, and Vallone. Council Member Costa Constantinides, you may begin. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Combo. First, I want to begin by thanking my colleague, uh, Council Member Rafael Salamanca, uh, for his graciousness and the ability to have the conversation that we did yesterday with Community Board 2 in the Bronx. And I'm looking forward to many years of partnership uh, as we move and transition uh, Rikers Island to renewable Rikers. So thank you for your partnership. And of course, thank you to the speaker uh, for your leadership as well. Uh, today, we're going to be moving forward into 1591B as part of the Renewable Rikers Act that would require the DEP commissioner in consultation with the sanitation commissioner to assess the feasibility of conducting wastewater treatment facility on Rikers Island. Uh, the study would consider population projections and alternative, possible alternatives to wastewater treatment and disposable, as well, as well as minimum and maximum capacity by a wastewater treatment facility on the island. And, and looking at how wastewater might be able to be diverted from other facilities, such as Hunts Point, Bowery Bay, or College Point, and the capacity uh, for future capture of CSOs on the island. The study will also look at organic waste recycling for composting, organic uh, uh, co-digestion, uh, biosolid reuse, also assess methane, uh, the potential for uh, installation of methane recovery systems. I'd also look at the Rikers Island Advisory Committee will make recommendations to the department regarding the feasibility and a separate review regarding the presence of methane. I want to thank all of the advocates who worked so hard on all of these bills. Uh, Vidal Guzman, Condra Clark, Marcos Barrios, Rebecca Bradsby's The Freedom Agenda, uh, Nija, Nilpi, the Lippman Commission, Point CDC, We Act for Mind of Justice, Seth Corbin Mark, you're always in our thoughts, brother. We miss you. Uh, uh, the NRDC, Samara Swanston on our staff, Brad Reed, Nicole B, Laura Popa, uh, Nick Wazowski, my former chief of staff, Nick Rolson. Uh, Nikki Aravantes, my former communications director, Terrence Cohen, uh, and thank you, my colleagues, for your consideration today. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Borelli. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leaker, uh, Leader. I, I just want to, uh, you know, remind uh, my colleagues that every stated meeting, we, we start out by uh, reading the, the names of city workers who died uh, serving our city. And on April 11th, 2018, we did the same thing uh, with the name of firefighter Michael Davidson. Uh, and unlike so many of those, uh, we actually have the opportunity to make the changes uh, that could prevent future deaths uh, like that, which unfortunately and tragically happened to him. Uh, so these two bills that are coming out of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management fundamentally changed the way the fire department uh, responds to the film industry and the way the film industry keeps and treats their sets uh, as safe working environments. I wanna thank uh, one person in particular, Ms. Uh, Eileen Davidson, who has been a, an absolute rock on this issue uh, since the beginning. You know, she, she has sat through uh, in person with so many of our meetings and you know, just, just has been stoic as we spitballed and, and hashed out the, the circumstances really that led to the death of her husband and I know she's doing it for her four children uh, and uh, today we also heard from uh, Michael Davidson's parents who are really supportive of this bill so I want to thank them for their commitment to, to making things better for future members of the FDNY. I want to thank the UFA for, for their support uh, President Andy Ansborough and the Vice President Bobby Eustace 
And of course, I want to thank uh, our staff who worked on the bill. Uh, my staff member, Frank Mascia, uh, Josh Kingsley, Jeff Baker, Rachel Cordera, uh, William Hongach, uh, and Jason Goldman, who, who everyone knows is just always so pleasant uh, to deal with. So this bill will really impact the way uh, we do business in New York City. It will allow the film industry to keep operating. We love them. We want them. Uh, and it'll be done safer. So thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Cornegie. Thank you, Madam, Madam Majority Leader. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for creating an environment where we can actually work across the aisles and set example for this nation that when we set our sights on doing something on behalf of our first responders, there is space in this crazy political environment to work across the aisles. I had a chance to work with um, Chair Borelli uh, on these two bills and in particular my bill and uh, so good afternoon. My name is Councilmember Robert Cornegie, and like all of my colleagues, I have an obligation to make sure that New Yorkers do not die needlessly, especially in the commission of their assigned duties. Earlier today, we had a Zoom meeting, including Eileen Davidson and her young children, who, quite frankly, were well, much more well behaved than mine would have been during these circumstances. Ms. Davidson is mourning the loss of her husband, Lieutenant Michael Davidson, and these children will spend most of their lives without their father. Lieutenant Davidson should not have died. His wife should not have been mourning his life and her grief compels me to act. Lieutenant Davison died during a five alarm fire at a Harlem walk up on March 22nd, 2018. The film production company altered the building during the filming and created a hazard resulting in his death. That is why council member Borelli and I sponsored intros 1849A and 1852A. Our cities must provide adequate information when the firefighters arrive at a building that has been altered during a filming. We urge immediate and I'm asking for my, all of my colleagues uh, to vote yes on these bills. At heart, they're very simple. Film production companies should communicate better with the fire department. And on-site locations for film production should be cleared of life-threatening violations. With our new powers of communication, I see no reason why we can't communicate uh, and improve communication between film and production companies and the fire department. As we try to improve communication in the age of Instagram and Twitter, we also have an opportunity to honor and strengthen older forms of communication. That's why I wanna also mark the introduction of New York City Living Treasures legislation I introduced today with council members, Van Brema, Joni, and Cumbo. Our city serves as home to innumerable cultural traditions, festivals, and art forms. These serve as an indispensable part of the intangible cultural heritage of our city. This Living Treasures legislation will put our city in line with decades long efforts to elevate, to elevate intangible cultural heritage from the 1950s to now. I urge my colleagues to sign on to this Living Treasures legislation as well. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Majority Leader for this time. Thank you. Council Member Vallone. Time begins. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first and foremost, I guess all of our love prayer and condolences to council members Rose and Adams um, during these times. Welcome back, council member Jim Gennaro. And I just wanted to take this time now because I don't think I'll be able to later to just explain a little bit about 1839. So thank you to Speaker Johnson, always proud to stand with you, especially on this legislation. Uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard has evolved from its early years as a naval shipbuilding yard into one of the city's most well-run engines for economic development. The yard provides stable, affordable space for industrial businesses for over 450 employing 11,000 people and generating over 2.5 billion per year in economic activity. The joint partnership is a template for the future growth and viability of all small businesses, manufacturing, technology, and industry expansion, especially during the pandemic and resulting financial hardship the city faces. However, we must not forget that our city is the ultimate landlord for all city owned properties. Therefore, it is imperative that the city council is included in the process and kept informed on the progress of any new and ongoing leaseholds, especially with a property as vital and successful as the Brooklyn Navy Yards. Prior to intro 1839, we had none. Today's bill brings much needed accountability to one of the city's most vital economic assets, especially in light of the ongoing expansion of the Navy Yard's master plan, which was announced in 2018. Any significant investment made by the city should come with the equally significant oversight and transparency to ensure that we are responsibly using taxpayer funds. Um, we applaud the Navy Yard Development Corp and the businesses for their hard work throughout the pandemic. And I'd like to thank my fellow committee uh, council members who voted unanimously in favor of the bill this morning, as well as Jeffrey Baker, Emily Forgione, Alex Polinoff, 
Josh Kingsley, my chief of staff, Jonathan Shutt, and again, our speaker for all of our efforts to bring today's vote to a bill, today to a vote. I urge my colleagues to vote aye. And lastly, Madam Majority Leader, may I have permission to vote on all item, items on today's calendar? Permission granted. I'd like to vote aye on, on all matters on today's calendar, except abstain on 2231 um, for a later date, hoping to get further information on the Department of Finance with some of those senior exemptions. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Vallone. Are there any members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak? Yes, Dharma Diaz and Councilmember Yeager. Time begins. Again, okay, Mr. Reminder, this is only about items that will be on the general orders calendar. Thank you for this opportunity. I'll be quick, I'll be brief. I just wanna personally thank on behalf of all the clients that I have worked with in the Schultz system that the status is undocumented and immigrants. I wanna thank you for the resolutions you're presenting today. Having dealt with individuals that were not able to obtain apartments during COVID because of their lack of income and reading um, what I'm reading here, these four resolutions, it just breaks it home to me. And knowing that I represent a diverse community, I just wanna thank you for just having the conversation and knowing that I'm amongst individuals that have not lost their focus. I'm often asked, oh, why do you mind or why are you advocating for, the, for those that cannot vote for you? It is my duty and it's my obligation as a human being to assure that everyone I come in contact with has a voice. But if I may, I encourage all my colleagues to support in the resolutions that are presented today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, in December, the legislature passed and the governor signed the Emergency Eviction and Foreclosure Prevention Act of 2020. Among other provisions, the legislation required the city to carry over the senior citizens' homeowner exemptions and disabled homeowner exemptions from last year to the next year without requiring a new application. Today, the council considers introduction 2231, which will allow the city to deny to any property owner whom the Department of Finance, quote, has reason to believe, unquote, may no longer be entitled to the exemption. These property owners would be required to file an application by March 15th, a little over two weeks from now. To be clear, if this council does nothing today, if we do not pass this law, every homeowner entitled to the exemptions will receive it without doing anything more. This law allows the city to deny to certain homeowners, for example, if the Department of Finance believes the homeowner has passed away. Who amongst us wants to explain to a senior citizen that, oh, so sorry, but the city thought you were dead? We all have constituents who with the passage of this law will be required to file new applications in 18 days. Otherwise they will be denied the exemptions. Today we are wisely passing intro 2225, which I'm proud to co-sponsor, acknowledging that so many of our seniors are homebound and need our help. Introduction 2231 does the opposite. If you are absolutely comfortable with the idea that the Department of Finance never errs, that its data is always correct, that an eligible senior citizen or disabled homeowner has never been improperly denied an exemption, then this bill is for you. Vote your conscience. But if you are like me, and you believe that once again, the city is balancing its budget improperly on the backs of our neighbors, that it is as likely as not that the department will declare dead those very much alive, that if an error is made by the department, they will need insufficient time to fix it by March 15th, then please join me in voting no. Please remember, if we vote no, not a single eligible senior citizen or disabled homeowner will lose the exemption. It is only a yes vote that will potentially cause this result. I urge you, please join me in voting no today in 2231 and stand up for our neighbors. They will all receive this exemption. Nobody will be denied. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. Just to be sure, Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak that we have not acknowledged at this time? Two more, Council Members Rosenthal and Jonai. Council Member Rosenthal, you may begin following the time clock. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think I would have spoken up about this before, but I, I rise to remind everyone that um, uh, I guess if you have, the Department of Finance has lists of people who, um, are part of the exemption category. I think it's about 800 people. And I think people should do the responsible thing, which is reach out to the members of their community who are on that list to make sure that 
if they are eligible that they can fill out the paperwork. I know that's work that my office does every year anyways. Um, and we, of course, will be reaching out to the people in our district. Um, they have, I guess, a little over two weeks to fill it out. You know, what I so am so impressed by, by the Department of Finance, is that they're not sort of taking the sloppy approach of just automatically renewing all of them, but instead being responsible bureaucrats by identifying people in homes that may no longer be eligible for what is a sacred um, tax deduction for those who are struggling. Uh, it's so important for those who are struggling to get those exemptions, um, but it's also so important that those who try to cheat the system, maybe sell their property or um, add in somebody as a, as onto their lease who is also bringing in a, an income to make sure those people do not benefit from an exemption that they don't no longer are um, you know enabled to get um, you know the, our tax dollars are precious um, we have so many needs in our city and um, I just want to thank the speaker. I want to thank uh, the finance team for making sure that this um, legislation, thank you, um, is good and solid. And of course, we should make sure, keep our, our Department of Finance's feet to the fire to make sure that they do right by all of those who are eligible for the exemption. I know I'll be watching that very closely in my district. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Rosenthal. We will now have Council Member Jonai. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, first, first, let me begin by extending my sincerest condolences to Council Member Adams' family on their loss. I will keep her and her family in my prayers as they deal with the loss of another loved one. I also take this moment to recognize and congratulate Council Member Gennaro on coming back to the city council. I wanna echo some of the comments that were made by my colleagues, including council member Rosenthal, where I truly agree with her on transparency and making sure that our taxpayer dollars are spent wisely and those that uh, should be paying uh, must pay. Uh, but I wanna firmly argue and reinforce the argument that council member Yeager made that two weeks is not sufficient time Introduction uh, 2231 will only give a little over two weeks time for our most vulnerable, the very ones that we say we need to protect and defend, our senior citizens and our disabled homeowners that are currently receiving a real estate tax exemption. The Department of Finance has outlined four categories. One, death. Two, um, if there was an expert of a, a property transfer into a sale. Three, adding a person to the deed. Or four, um, if there was any change in primary address. Of the 800 properties, majority leader, 28 are in my district. I received those addresses yesterday. Of the 28, my own research revealed four are death related. Six are through a transfer what appears to be a sale, leaving 18 properties, six which have no change that I can confirm of any of those four aside from a satisfaction of mortgage um, as being <clears throat> as a reason for change. And lastly, 12 are due to trust and family transfers or that added a family member with the last names correlated to that homeowner. We are going to be doing an injustice to our most vulnerable homeowners during a pandemic where we may not be able to reach them because they may not be here due to winter if they're snowbirders, two, if they're currently living with their children as this pandemic and crisis has forced them to seek shelter in homes where they can get the comfort and the uh, health care that they need. 
So I'm gonna urge my colleagues and council members to consider this vote. It's 800 homes. Two weeks is not sufficient time. The damage can be permanent and overwhelming to our community homeowners. Thank you very much, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Joni. Are there any other members, Mr. Parliamentarian, who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, and I thank all of our colleagues for their participation. At this time, we're going to have the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Aging, intro 2225A, COVID-19 vaccination for homebound seniors. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Economic Development, mm -hmm. intro 1839A, Brooklyn Navy Yard. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intro 1591B, Rikers Island Wastewater Treatment Facility. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, intro 2046A, Capital Project Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered intro 2230, Preliminary Budget Dates. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered intro 2231, Property Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1544, Transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M288 and Reso 1548 and M289 and Reso 1549, Transfer of City Funds and New Revenues. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 731 and Reso 1550 and preconsidered LU 732 and Reso 1551, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, intros 1849A and 1852A, Film Production Fire Safety Provisions. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 714 and 715, 4211 9th Street Special Permit. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 722 and Reso 1552 and LU 723 and Reso 1553 16th Avenue rezoning. Motion to disapprove. LU 724 and Reso 1554 East 25th Street Historic District. Coupled on general orders. LU 725 and Reso 1555 Everlasting Pine HDFC ground lease amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 726 and Reso 1556 East Harlem URP Amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 727 and 728, 9114 Fifth Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 729 and Reso 1557, 214, 32 Hillside <laughs> Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, Preconsidered Reso 1546 Council Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. On the general orders calendar, LU 712 and Reso 1558 through LU 721 and Reso 1561, various applications. Coupled on general orders, and I'm asking that the clerk take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general orders calendar. I'm Bree Samuel. I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I begin. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 2231, which is the uh, extent, which is the requirement that there are a number of people who would have to reapply because DOF believes that they are no longer eligible. At this point, there would be 11 families, homeowners that would possibly lose their exemption if they don't get an application and submit it on time. As has been said, we're living in a pandemic these are homeowners who may not be here, who may be with relatives living elsewhere, who may be even hospitalized and not have the ability to be contacted. And for me to know that there are 11 homeowners who may be eligible, but not have the ability to be contacted and apply means that I would be doing them a great disservice 
and wouldn't want to have to meet them someplace and ask me why I voted for a bill that put them in this category when they are presently already protected. So for that reason, I'm voting no on 2231. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all except intro 2231, uh, M288, and resolutions 1416A, 1417A, 1418A, and 1419A. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member Brennan. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of 2231. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you so much. You. I first want to congratulate uh, Council Member Gennaro. Remember when I uh, came in 2010, uh, how he led uh, in issues related to the environment, his passion. Uh, it always marked me uh, for his love and his award winning film. So, welcome. It's glad to have you back. Uh, also, I want to extend uh, my condolences, and my prayers uh, to Council Member Adams, who lost uh, her mommy. You know what that feels like. I lost my mommy this year, and I know some of us here uh, as well. And to uh, Council Member Riley, uh, losing uh, a patriarch, your grandfather. My prayers are with you. And with that, I want to vote aye on all, with the exception of 22, intro of 2231. And congratulations to Councilmember Traeger, tremendous bill. Thank you for taking care of our senior. That's an issue that I'm dealing with right here in my uh, particular district. And also uh, to Councilmember Borelli uh, and the UFO uh, for looking out for our firefighters. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. I vote aye on all. Constantinidis. I may excuse to explain my vote. Permission granted. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I want to begin by extending my condolences to Councilmember Adams and the loss of her mother, uh, Councilmember Rose on the loss of her partner, uh, Councilmember Riley on the loss of his grandfather. I'm praying for all of their families this evening. And I want to uh, welcome back. Uh, a very good friend of mine and mentor and council member Gennaro, uh, who once upon a time, uh, uh, 13 years ago, hired me as a third year law student uh, to become his legislative director. Uh, and uh, we did lots of great work together in the six years that we worked together. He has been a great friend and mentor to me over the years. And I'm excited to have him back at this council and doing the good work that he's always done on behalf of the people of this district and on behalf of the people of the city of New York on environmental issues. So welcome council member Gennaro. I'm, I'm only sad that we're not gonna be able to sit together uh, in the chamber with one another, uh, you know, arm in arm. So with that, I vote aye on all. And again, thank my colleagues and look forward to hoping your support on intros of 1591B. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I want to also extend my uh, condolences to all of our colleagues, Riley and, and Rose uh, and Adrian Adams who've lost uh, loved ones during this, this, this very tumultuous time. I want to congratulate uh, all of my colleagues who are passing substantive and important bills uh, today. Uh, and I want to vote aye on all except 2231. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Carnegie. Deutsch. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate um, um, our new colleague, Jim Gennaro. I want to echo the words uh, of um, uh, Fernando Cabrera of what he said about Jim Gennaro. I also want to echo the words in regards to intro 2231 of what my colleagues have mentioned, uh, Councilman Calman Yeager, um, Mark Joe and I, and Inez Barron. 
And uh, I also want to echo the words what the speaker said and wish everyone a happy Purim. And uh, with that said, I vote no on intro 2231 and are in the rest. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. I will die. <clears throat> Ruben Diaz. I will, I will, yes, on all except intro 2231. Drum. I am all. Eugene. Uh, may I have uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to express my deepest sympathy and condolences to Council Member Adam and to Council Member Rose. The only thing that I can say is that, you know, may God give you, both of you, the strength that you need to overcome this very difficult moment. And I want to take the opportunity also to welcome back Council Member Genero. I had the opportunity to serve together with you, and I know who you are. Your experience in your dedication to service represents a great asset to the district that you are going to serve. Welcome back and all success. May God bless you and your family. Thank you. With this, I would yes and all, except on uh, intro 2231. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Eugene. Gennaro. Your leader, I want to speak on my vote. Please. Uh, first of all, I, 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 I uh, mourn with the council family uh, with regard to uh, uh, council members uh, um, Adams and Rose and Riley. Their families will be in my prayers. I wish to uh, thank the speaker and uh, you, Madam Majority Leader, and uh, my uh, dear friend and brother Costa and all my colleagues on your good wishes. It's great to be back. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Gip, excuse me, Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Right, Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Speaker, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, colleagues and everyone. I want to join with all of you in sending our love and condolences of, you know, comfort, prayer, and healing to our sisters, to Council Member Debbie Rose and Council Member Adrian Adams, and certainly sending love and light to Council Member Kevin Riley on all of your losses. We are praying that God strengthens you in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, I also want to join with Council Member Salamanca, my colleague in the Bronx delegation, in recognizing the great work of Council Member Costa Constantinides. And thank you for including the Bronx in all of the conversations as it relates to renewable energy and the future of Rikers Island. Uh, there is such a long history of Rikers Island, a very painful one. And as we look towards a renewable energy system and what that looks like on the island, certainly the borough of the Bronx has a vested interest in that land. And I appreciate your leadership in making sure that the Bronx is not forgotten. So uh, with that, congratulations to all my colleagues who have introduced bills. Also want to join with everyone in welcoming our newest colleague from Queens, Council Member Jim Gennaro. We're looking forward to working with you. And with that, I vote aye on all. And happy Black History Month to my colleagues and friends and happy Hispanic Heritage Month as well. Thank you, Council Member okay. Gibson. Council Member Barron. <clears throat> Uh, yes, thank you. I wanted to amend my vote. I'm also voting no on 720 and 721. And I want to join with the rest of the body in extending condolences to Council Member Debbie Rose, Council Member Adrian Adams, and Council Member Riley on the losses that they've suffered. And we're keeping them in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Just to clarify, Council Member, those land use items? Yes, that's correct, land use items. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader. Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I extended uh, my sincere condolences to uh, Council Member Adams, I did not mention uh, Council Member Rose and Riley, uh, your 
extend my heartfelt condolences on the loss of their loved ones. I'll be voting aye on all except intro 2231, and I encourage my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Lord Enchik. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, first, let me extend uh, my condolences as a number of our colleagues have done today. It was just yesterday that I was working uh, with Adrian Adams to help one of her constituents' mom try to find a bed in the nursing home. Um, and now today we're dealing with such grief and I am so very, very sorry uh, to receive uh, the news of her mother's passing as I am of the passing of uh, Debbie Rose's partner and uh, Kevin Riley's grandfather. So my condolences to all of them and may they be comforted. Um, I want to welcome back my uh, dear friend, Jim Gennaro, when he defeated me uh, for his council seat in 2001. Little did either of us suspect that we would be sitting in the New York City Council together, but I'm happy to welcome him back uh, today as a colleague and as a dear friend and brother. And I look forward to serving with him um, and to uh, supporting the 188th Street Caucus. He knows what that means. Um, and uh, finally, um, uh, before I vote aye on all, I want to uh, wish everybody uh, who is celebrating uh, starting this evening a very, very happy uh, and sweet Purim. Purim is a holiday uh, where the Jewish people celebrate, uh, celebrate deliverance from tyranny um, from those who uh, would have not only oppressed us, but have murdered us uh, for the fact that we are Jews. Um, we are grateful to God for his deliverance at that time as we are every day. And I wanna wish all my uh, fellow Jews and everybody really who's celebrating Purim a happy, sweet and kosher Purim. With that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, prayers for the Adams, Rose, and Riley families on your tremendous loss and uh, my condolences. And welcome to round two to my Queens colleague, Jim Gennaro. It'll be great working with you. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 2231 and M288 with accompanying resolution 1548, for which I vote no. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Kalos. I and all. Ku. Uh, permission to speak my well? Permission granted. Time Thank you. Now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, first, I want to express my sincere condolences to Council Member Adams for her mother's passing and Council Member Debbie Rose for her. Uh, Lifetime, uh, may lifetime good friend, um, Manny passed away, and Council Member Wiley, uh, his grandfather passed away. Uh, please accept my sincere condolences. And second, I want to welcome that our uh, esteemed um, former Council Member Janelle. Uh, we would love to work with him. Of him, of a view. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, thirdly, I want to say uh, I will eye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kuhl. Kaz Lewis. I I know all. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thanks so much. First, I join all my colleagues in condolences for. Council members Adams and Riley and, and Council member Rose, uh, for you especially, I'm just thinking back to so many times um, when Manny was there for you in the very hardest times um, and when you were there for him in the hardest times too. Um, that's a beautiful, beautiful partnership and we're heartbroken for all of you and, and with all of you as much as we possibly can be. This is such a rotten time to lose someone and, and we love all of you. Um, I do also want to welcome Councilmember Gennaro back uh, to this body, uh, who I also had the good fortune of serving with and look forward to again. I want to thank my colleagues for supporting uh, my bill today 
to clarify and codify the capital projects information that we get from the administration. Last year, we passed the capital projects tracker bill to create an online tracking system, which will enormously help in making sure that our infrastructure investments that we so desperately need for a just recovery are more likely to be on time and on budget, not cost twice as much and take twice as long as we know they so often do. Uh, so thank you for supporting that legislation today. Um, I vote no on intro 2231 and I on all other items. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. I want to, um, permission to explain my vote. Um, permission granted. Thank I'll you. Um, I, uh, I, I want to offer my condolences uh, uh, to my colleagues, Adrian Adams, on the loss of her mother, um, uh, Council Member Riley, on the loss of his grandfather, and especially Member Rose, on the loss of her partner, Penny. Um, I know um, uh, it's, it's been like that just how connected um, you were. Um, and, uh, and we're with you as a council family in your time of grief. Uh, um, and with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. Thank you. Uh, request uh, permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader. Permission granted. Thank you so much. I, I just want to offer my, my heartfelt condolences to our colleagues, Council Member Rose, Adams, and Riley on the devastating losses that they're mourning. We join you in this morning and sending you much love and prayers. Uh, I also want to welcome back Council Member Gennaro. And I want to wish all those who are observing tonight's holiday, Chal Poim Sameach, Happy Purim. And finally, I will be voting I on all. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. Board and Leader and Speaker Johnson for the opportunity to speak. I wanted to first express my heartfelt condolences to Council Members Rose, Adams, and Riley. You are all in my thoughts and prayers, and also want to send a warm welcome to our new colleague, Council Member Gennaro. A process that I had started from the beginning of my time as Council Member, the landmarking of East 25th Street is finally being voted on today. I fully support the residents of East 25th Street and urge my colleagues to vote for the preservation of the iconic architecture of Flatbush by designating this block a landmark. Um, I vote aye on all except 2231. I would fully support, I fully support um, the exemption renewal, but with the limited time to contact 25 homeowners in my district that would be impacted, I wouldn't be able to support this today, but look forward to working with the council and supporting these homeowners in the future. Thank you. Maizel. Yes. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I want to send my condolences to Council Members Riley, Rose, and Adams, uh, sending love and light to you and your families. I want to vote no on 2231. Uh, this is consistent with some of the other things that the mayor's office is trying to create revenue uh, at a time when the pandemic, I think, is forcing us all to stop and rethink how we are doing that. Uh, and I want to vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, on behalf of the, my colleagues at Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, I, I would like to take this opportunity to extend our profound condolences and sympathy to our dear sisters, Debbie Rose and Adrian Adams on the loss of their family members, uh, Manny Praxton and uh, retired New York City Correction Captain uh, Ruth Edie Middleton, as well as uh, Brother uh, 
Kevin Riley on the passing of his grandfather. Um, these are trying times. May their hearts and soul begin to mend by receiving the everlasting mercy and compassion of the Almighty and extend to their family from our city council family. Indeed, God, we came from and God, we will return and may uh, the Creator send his angels and receive their works into paradise. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you so very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Moya. Hi. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. What did you want to talk about? What just, oh, you just was. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just wanted to explain my vote on uh, Reso uh, 1419, uh, almost a year battling COVID-19, uh, a pandemic that has uh, shaken us in more ways than one. Uh, we've seen who has bore the brunt of this pandemic, and that is Black, Brown, Latino, and immigrant communities. Our frontline healthcare workers, who are predominantly foreign-born, uh, have literally sacrificed their lives to make a difference and help save lives during one of the worst pandemics this city, this country, uh, this globe has ever seen. Uh, the families of these frontline workers uh, not only had to suffer the loss of their loved ones, they've had to deal with the financial hardship and are at risk of losing their own immigration status. Uh, I introduced this resolution because we need to value the contributions and honor the sacrifices immigrants have made for our city and for our country. And we must treat our immigrant communities, uh, including and especially children uh, with humanity. One way we can do so is by providing immigration relief to surviving family members of frontline healthcare workers who passed away as a result of contracting COVID-19. These families, these children are already battling uh, COVID-19 on top of suffering great loss. They should not be fighting deportations or lose the only home that they've ever known uh, in, the, in the United States solely because their family members sacrificed their lives to help others during this unprecedented pandemic. Um, so I ask and I encourage my colleagues uh, to please uh, vote yes on resolution 1419. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to say I'd be voting aye on all. Thank you. Powers. I know. Thank you. One moment. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. So I want to send my condolences to uh, Council Members Riley, Rose, and Adams. Um, in a time when you know we're we're dealing with mass grief, um, I don't want it to become numb um, to to the folks that um, that are suffering for so, so much. So I just um, I can't tell you how heartbroken I am, um, and hope you know uh, anything you need from me, please please reach out. Um, uh, I want to vote aye on all. Um, I believe, with the exception of 2231. Uh, can you correct me if I'm wrong, clerk, uh, in the legislation related to um, the not-for-profit status? Oh, I'm sorry, the exemption status for seniors? Correct. Um, so I want to vote no on that and not on the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Riley. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I mm -hmm. just should, thank you. I would just like to extend my condolences to my colleagues, uh, Council Member Rose and Council Member Adams for their loss. Um, also would like to extend my gratitude to my colleagues for recognizing my grandfather who was 97 years old, uh, Noel Oscar Riley, who passed away on February 12th, uh, the same day my grandmother passed away uh, when I was in high school in 2003. Uh, so she called him up, um, like my family said, um, he was taking too long, but he lived a very uh, beautiful um, life. Um, I just want to continue to carry out his legacy and his name. He was a very social uh, person in this community from a Co-op City um, community. Um, so I just thank everyone for, for recognizing him today. Um, this will mean the world to him. And he was very proud of me and was able to see me in the seat before he passed away. So thank you so much. Um, and I would like to vote I don't know. Thank you. Hey, man. Thank you. Rivera. 
The warm welcome to Council Member Jim Gennaro. I vote aye on all. Rodriguez. My condolences to our colleagues that have lost the loved one, and I vote aye. Okay. Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I vote aye on all, no exceptions. I just really, uh, first of course, welcome Council Member Gennaro. I remember a decade ago standing at a rally with you on uh, some environmental justice issue. You were, you were just terrific. Uh, so welcome, welcome back, I guess. Um, but I really want to extend my, my deepest heartfelt um, condolences um, to Council Members Adam, Rose, and Riley. Council Member Riley, it was just such a beautiful tribute to your grandfather. Um, you know, as elected officials, we have um, things that happen in our life, the normal everyday things that happen to everyone. Um, but, you know, it feels like we have a, a little bit of time, only a little bit of time to to remember our loved ones. But the truth is that um, we will remember them for the rest of our lives. And they've all put a, a wonderful imprint into who you are. And, um, and I appreciate that so much, um, especially uh, Council Member Rose and, and Adams, who I know a little bit better. I know how, how deeply an imprint um, these people had in your life. So um, with deep condolences and, and also congratulations to all the bill sponsors. Um, it's great legislation that's passing this time. So thank you very much. I vote I down all again, all of it, no exceptions. They're all great bills. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. Salamanca. I and all. Traeger. Aye and all. Ulrich. Good afternoon and welcome back to uh, Council Member Gennaro. My condolences to my colleagues who lost relatives. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of M288 and preconsidered intro 2231. I'm voting no on those two measures. Aye on all others. My apologies, Council Member over to M288 and Council Member Ulrich. Yes, I'm sorry. I said I'm voting no on M288 and preconsidered intro 2231. Okay. Thank you. My apologies. Thank you. Van Bramer. Uh, with great condolences uh, to my colleagues, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, first, of course, uh, I want to echo all my colleagues uh, in expressing our profound condolences uh, for myself personally uh, on behalf of the people I represent and uh, joining with my colleagues in this body uh, to our friends and our brother and sisters, uh, Council Members Adams, uh, Rose, and uh, Councilman Riley. These losses are profound. Uh, we, I don't think anybody here hasn't lost somebody this year. Um, I lost my grandmother earlier uh, um, during the course of the last year. Uh, and, you know, they, they all get to watch us uh, get to this place and um, I, I don't think it's pride as much as fascination that we managed to get here. Uh, and to see us here, I think we did them proud. I hope we do every day. And I express my condolences to them. Uh, to um, our new colleague, Councilman Jim Gennaro, I, uh, before you got here, I, speak, I frequently speak on this floor or now over this computer of the giants who came here before I did and whose shoes I try to fill. And a lot of room. Uh, you're one of those giants. Uh, you 
you know, I knew you when you were in the council. Uh, you're somebody who's up to tremendously. I look forward to looking up to you uh, continuously throughout our service together. And if the people return me to having our time together in the people's house next year, um, but uh, you you will do us proud. I know that, and I expect uh, nothing less. Uh, I am voting no on intro 2231 for the reasons I stated earlier. I am grateful and proud of all my colleagues who joined uh, in this opportunity to stand up for our neighbors and uh, with great understanding to those who were not able to do so. I also vote no on resolution 1548, uh, consistent with how I have voted in the past on items like this, but specifically this resolution moving funds out of our community boards uh, against their will. Uh, inexplicably, and uh, in many cases, they will have to struggle to make those cuts. Uh, this was not done with the consent of the community boards. It was dictated upon them, and I'm not going to be able to vote in favor of that. As somebody who served on our community board for 18 years, I can't support that. Um, so with that, I've cast my votes. I vote aye on the remainder, and my gratitude to all who have wished my community a happy Purim. I extend that back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. Aye on all. Thank you. Matteo. Thank you, I'm voting no on 2231, M288 and accompanying Reso 1548, thank you. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. Aye on all. Okay, thank you. All items on today's general order calendar had a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero in the negative and no abstentions with the exception of the following. Preconceived introduction 2231 has 28 in the affirmative, 17 in the negative and one abstention. And uh, M288 with resolution 1548 has 41 in the affirmative, five in the negative with no abstentions and land use items 720 and 721 with their accompanying resolutions have a vote of 45 in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. There are no land use calls. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who have signed up and in what order? Yes, Council Member Eugene. Council Member Eugene, you may begin. Thank you course. very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader, and thank you, Speaker Johnson. Uh, today, I'm sponsoring three very important pieces of legislation that I believe are critical toward uh, protecting the health and the well-being of members of the immigrant community who are facing deportation or other removal proceedings, as well as safeguarding the countries of origin during the COVID-19 pandemic. Resolution 1416 calls on the United States Department of Homeland Security to hold all deportation proceeding for the length of the COVID-19 pandemic as a means of restricting the global spread of the disease. Resolution 1417 calls on the United States Department of Homeland Security to place a moratorium on all removal proceeding 
for employment-based status holders that suffered a loss of employment during the, or due to COVID-19 pandemic. In Resolution 1418, called on United States Congress to pass and the president to sign legislation that would permit employment-based status holders to remain lawful status in the United States after loss of employment if such loss was related to COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the availability of the COVID-19 vaccination, we all know that the novel coronavirus remains a serious threat to the global community, as we have also more obligation to protect the health of the members of the immigrant population in the United States, especially those facing deportation. Unfortunately, proper safety and hygienic measures are often not a practice during deportation proceedings. And because of this, COVID-19 can easily spread among deportees and will continue to spread in the countries they are returning to. This means that the virus will be transmitted outside of the United States and then can potentially infect those who are returning to the United States while having an exponentially harmful effect on countries still struggling to contain the virus. If we are going to continue to fight this horrible pandemic, we must be more proactive in how we protect the safety of those facing deportation. I know that there are many status holders within my district and throughout New York City who have suffered a loss of employment due to COVID-19. And I believe it is a moral obligation to protect them for removal proceeding for the reminder of uh, the COVID-19. They are cab drivers, business owners, laborers, delivery people, and so many status holders who lost employment during the COVID-19. We must protect uh, their health and their well-being so that they are not deported to countries where COVID remains a serious threat. They are the workers who represent the strength of our local economy and their tireless dedication to our city has kept us moving forward throughout this crisis. I believe that this legislation is necessary to help employment-based status holders remain in safe and secure environment while trying to secure new worker opportunities through the extent of the COVID-19 pandemic. We should protect our immigrant population from deportation during this pandemic while limiting the spread of COVID-19. I want to thank my colleagues who have co-sponsored this legislation. And I want also to thank the city council legislation, legislative de department. And I urge all my colleagues to vote yes on this very important legislation. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. And thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much, Council Member Eugene. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolution specifically? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. We'll now have a voice vote on today's resolutions. If you wish to vote against or abstain from either of today's resolutions, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Resolution 1416A calls on the United States Department of Homeland Security to halt all deportation proceedings for the length of the COVID-19 pandemic as a means of restricting the global spread of this disease. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 1417A calls on the United States Department of Homeland Security to place a moratorium on all removal proceedings for employment-based status holders that suffered a loss of employment during or due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 aye.
Aye. All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 1418A calls on the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign legislation that would permit employment-based status holders to retain lawful status after loss of employment if such loss was related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 1419A calls on the United States Congress to pass and the president to sign legislation that would provide immigration relief for family members who derive lawful immigration status from a frontline worker who passed away during or due to COVID-19. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Resolution 1473 calls upon the New York City Department of Education to provide families of children with disabilities the necessary training and equipment to provide enabled distance learning. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you and we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members at this time who wish to speak? Yes. Council members Levin and Barron. Council member Levin, you may begin. I begins. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I, I just was remiss in neglecting to acknowledge my good friend, Jim Gennaro, um, who's rejoining us at the council. Um, Jim is one of the sweetest, uh, most wonderful guys I know, and I welcome him back. Thank you very much. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Just as we're coming to the end of celebrating Black History Month, just wanted to call attention to the fact that on February the 22nd, we celebrated the anniversary of the assassination of the Reverend, of Minister Malcolm X. And as many people know, he was very much involved in the struggle for civil rights and for social justice. And one of his quotes uh, was that the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. And I just want to encourage my colleagues that as we are sitting here and as we are debating legislative matters and considering what will be the future coming out of this pandemic, that we be very mindful that we have a great opportunity to change what has been the status quo, to fight for the equity that has been denied to particularly people of color and low income people, and that we have an obligation and an opportunity to make sure that when this is all over, we have a more balanced and just society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Council Member Rosenthal. Council Member Rosenthal? Uh, you may thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really just wanted to mention and uh, real respect uh, to all my colleagues who voted against 2231. I, I really heard you loud and clear and I thought everyone raised great points. Um, you know, what, what it tells me is that when budget, when we're uh, in the position to have our oversight hearing on the, with the Department of Finance, we should certainly raise this issue and make sure that they have the staff to do the outreach necessary for those 800 New Yorkers, many of whom um, don't, uh, who no longer um, are eligible, but surely th there will be some who are eligible and that DOF does all it can to make sure those people who are eligible get re-enrolled. Um, so I, I thought it was 
um, important. I appreciate Council Member Yeager, Council Member Joni, who spoke extensively on it. Um, it's a it's a really fair point, but um, yeah. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Rosenthal. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Grudenchik and Yeager. Council Member Grudenchik, you may begin. Thank you, Majority Leader. Very briefly, uh, as we enter the budget season, our first budget hearing is this coming Tuesday. I want to remind my colleagues and our mayor that too many people in this city are still going hungry. Thanks to the leadership of this council under Speaker Johnson, we have made a dent in the hunger issue in this city, but it has not gone away. And I hope that all of my colleagues and the mayor and his team will keep this foremost in their mind as we go over the next few months to craft the budget for FY22. Thank you. Barry, I want to say thank you. You and Steve were the real early leaders, and I gl I'm glad you keep talking about it. Uh, you, you started this right when you joined the council, and it's one of the most important things we do annually. So I'm so glad you mentioned that today. Thank you, Councilmember Grudenchik. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to Steve. Thank you. Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, I very much appreciate Councilmember Rosenthal's kind remarks about uh, today's vote and, and the results of the vote. Um, I just do want to point out that our first oversight hearing on the budget is on March 2nd, and uh, that will be 13 days before the deadline for any of these affected homeowners. The senior citizens, the ones that we voted today uh, to make sure that the homebound of them are getting their vaccinations, uh, they will have to have these forms completed by that time, 13 days from uh, that hearing. And as I look at the calendar, I don't see that the Department of Finance is even coming on that first day. It's uh, simply OMB uh, and, uh, you know, the controller, IBO. Uh, there wasn't time. There wasn't, there wasn't time for us to do anything other than vote this down to make sure that our neighbors are not going to get hurt with their exemptions. If there was time, it would have been great to consider it. That's why this was a pre-considered. It was done quickly and not because of this council, but because of how uh, uh, the short time in which the administrative, the administration acted. But the state legislature gave the city authority asked this to, to pass these exemptions along with no acts in December. And here we are, February 25th. And that's I think why so many of our colleagues stood up today. No, uh, and thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much, Councilmember Yeager. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Councilmember Barron will be our final speaker. Okay, Councilmember Barron. Thank you for the opportunity to make a correction. I stated the date of the assassination of Malcolm X as February 22nd. It's actually February 21st, 1965. Thank you for allowing me to correct it on the record. Thank you. <laughs> Just to be sure, before we close out this meeting, are there any other members who wish to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. Well, as the Majority Leader, I want to officially welcome uh, Jim Bonero. It's been a pleasure um, seeing you in the DEM conference. I had the pleasure of meeting you personally, but I certainly look forward to working with you. I also want to encourage all of my colleagues, as there are many new members in this body, I think it important for us to reach out to them, um, to give what guidance that we can during this time because as we can all imagine how difficult it is to open or not open an office, hire new staff and to uh, navigate this online has been quite a challenge for us as, and we can only imagine for new members. So please reach out to them um, and to welcome them and to offer whatever guidance you can. I would say when I hear the losses that so many members of this body are facing, it really should remind all of us throughout this entire city and nation that we are just simply a nation consistently in mourning and we need to treat each other kinder because we are all people in mourning who have lost someone. And to my colleague, Debbie Rose, I had an opportunity uh, to meet Manny um, many times and I can just say, I applaud you for being here today. I understand what a heavy loss this is 
And when I saw him wearing those different designer Debbie Rolls t-shirts and button downs, I said, we should all be so lucky to be loved and supported in such an incredible way. You were loved in a way that many of us can only imagine. And so your loss is our loss. And I'm here for you, my sister. To Adrian Adams, we love you so much, so deeply. And we understand what an incredible loss this is on the heels of recently losing your dad. We can tell who you are by the quality um, of legislator you are, and we know where your ideals come from. And I too know what a heavy loss this is. And for Councilmember Riley, for you to have had the opportunity for your grandfather to see you elected to this body has got to be such an extraordinary feeling for you to know that he saw you accomplish something so great. So we are all here for you as we all share in your loss, as we are all grieving at the same time. And so I just want to extend my condolences to you all and this entire body. Um, and let's continue to work together to be kinder to one another and to recognize that we are all in mourning. Thank you. And I will now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close this meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The stated meeting of February 25th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Everyone be safe.